Hello, how are you doing? And welcome back to the channel. So Jacques Nienaber will depart the Springboks after the World Cup in France this year. This was the news that came out a couple of days ago. So I'm going to be speaking about it in this video. My reaction to that news, is it a good timing, bad timing? What does it mean for potentially the Springboks at the World Cup as well? So a few different things to get into here. I do think it's an interesting development and I do think the timing is interesting as well. So make sure you drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this news and also of the timing of this news. If you can like the video and subscribe to the channel as well, then for me, that's an added bonus. But all right, let's get into it. Now, I'm sure most of you have seen this news by now, but Jacques Nienaba, it has been confirmed, the Springboks head coach will depart South Africa following the World Cup in France later this year. He's then going to join up with Leinster. Stuart Lancaster is leaving there to join Racing. So it's a little bit of a kind of coach's merry-go-round, if you like. Lancaster is leaving Leinster. So Nianaba is heading there and he'll be one of the senior coaches in that Leinster setup, essentially. Leo Cullen there as the kind of director of rugby, as the head guy. And then Nianaba will be one of the, the main coaches uh, working for, for Leinster. So I think it's a great pickup for Leinster, first of all, actually. I know that the focus of this video is going to be on South Africa and what it means for them. But in terms of Leinster, who are one of the best, if not the best, club sides in Europe and South Africa at the moment, um, doing brilliant things in terms of the structure of their play, the, the team they have. I think Nianaba coming over with everything he's done with the Springboks, with his track record, what he's done defensively, I, I think it'll be a really interesting appointment for Leinster. But that's by the by, that's something to keep an eye on next season once that does happen. But first of all, the timing of this announcement. Why now? Was this a good appointment? This Similar conversations were actually had about the All Blacks and when New Zealand decided to announce that Scott Robertson would be taking over following the World Cup, Ian Foster departing. And Foster himself had said that he would quite like that announcement, that recruitment of a head coach to wait until after the World Cup, whereas New Zealand rugby kind of jumped the gun on it. And I've seen some people suggesting here with the Springboks as well, why now? Why do you make this announcement now when you're heading into a World Cup year? The Springboks obviously have the Rugby Championship beforehand, which will give us a, a really good indication of where they are as a team. And then, of course, the showpiece event in what I'm sure will be a brilliant World Cup in France later this year. I think my thoughts on this is you get it out of the way. You deal with it. You remove any sort of speculation or media circus around question marks over Nia Naba's future at the World Cup. And you prevent the possible situation of leaks to the press as well. Can you imagine being in a World Cup with the Springboks who are already on the really tough side of the draw with the top five ranked teams in the world, which, as we've said on this channel consistently now, is in itself ridiculous, but they're on that side of the draw. Can you imagine if they are in a situation where every press conference, post-match, pre-match, there's this groundswell of rumour about what's going to happen with Nia but whereas here, they've got it out the way, they know where they stand. He's going to depart after the World Cup. And then I suppose it'll be interesting to see if we know of who a replacement might be before the World Cup. Um, but then they can deal with that recruitment drive later in terms of appointing a new coach. So I actually think it kind of makes sense in a lot of different ways. I don't particularly see a downside to it. I mean, I can't see that it's going to affect the players, is it? Or anything within that dressing room. So I think overall, in terms of controlling the narrative, controlling the message, when that message is put out and when that information is out there, it's a smart move from the South African Rugby Union. So yeah, I don't have any issues really with the timing, but I wonder whether there will be people in the comments suggesting that maybe this isn't the best time to make that announcement. You can let me know. The other question, I suppose, is what impact does this have on the Rugby World Cup? Springboks looking to retain their title that they won in 2019. And I think they are one of a handful of teams who have the potential to go quite deep into the tournament, obviously factoring in whether they can get out of that tougher side of the draw. But I think they have the firepower. I think they've been building in a way, particularly last year, which if they continue to build upon the blocks they've already put in place, the Springboks could be dangerous. So will it affect the Rugby World Cup? Again, I just don't really think so. I don't, I don't see how this announcement is going to negatively affect the players unless the players like Jacques Nianaba so much to the extent that they're really not happy that he's leaving but I think they will just be absolutely set whether it's the coaches whether it's the players whether it's the off-field staff everyone in that setup is just going to be completely focused on 
getting the job done in France and retaining the Rugby World Cup. So I don't think it necessarily is going to have too much of an impact there either for the Springboks. I guess one question that is interesting is what does it mean for Razi Erasmus? He kind of went upstairs, didn't he, in that, I guess, it, director of rugby kind of role after being the coach that took them to the World Cup. I suppose he'll stay in that role, but him and Nian Naba have been a bit of a duo for quite a time now. Nian Naba was the assistant coach in 2019 under Erasmus, and then when Erasmus went on to his promotion, Nian Naba stepped up to the head coach role of the Springboks. So I wonder what it will mean for, for that dynamic, really, and, and what it means for the kind of higher structures in terms of coaching of South African rugby. We'll only really get a better indication of that when... You know, we know who's going to be the, the new head coach of the Springboks. So that's maybe one just to keep an eye on for the time being. But overall, as I say, I think that the timing of it makes sense and actually is quite a good thing. And I don't think it will affect the Rugby World Cup overall for the Springboks. I think, I guess the question for the Springbok fans, really, it's probably not something I can answer. Do you think it? Do you think it's the right time, not in terms of the timing and the stuff I've spoken about, do you think Nianaba has reached his natural conclusion of being the head coach. When I was speaking about timing, I was more talking about the timing of this announcement. Does it feel about the right time for Nianaba to move on? I guess what it's been, it's been a, a four year cycle, roughly, since the last World Cup. So he's almost been given that traditional kind of four year period. We've had a, a Lions Tour victory in the middle of that, unfortunately affected by COVID, so no fans in there. But we've got the Lions Tour victory. As I said, I think we started to see them build nicely last year. They got a big win against England at Twickenham. They pushed France really close in that game as well against one of the best teams in the world. So I guess one thing it might be interesting to hear from the South African fans is, do you feel Nianaba still has more to give in this role? Does it feel like it's the time for him to step away? I guess that's more the question mark, really, when I think about it in terms of this news. is it Has it come early in terms of what feels... It's the natural progression of this side. And teams work in four-year cycles. Teams work in World Cup cycles. So from that point of view, I guess it does make sense. But I just wonder with this South African team, whether there could be more to come from, from them with this coaching setup. And part of that is, well, we, we, we won't know until after the World Cup. But maybe that's just something to ponder and let me know what you think in the comments down below. Overall, as I say, I think... They're controlling the message. I don't think it's going to have a negative impact on the World Cup later this year. But could he have taken them further? Or is this a good time for him to step away and for the Springboks to move on to a new head coach? I think what I'm going to do is a video, a separate video on who I think should replace him. I'm going to give that a little bit more thought and probably release that tomorrow, which will be Tuesday. So for the time being, I'll leave that there. As I said at the top of the video, let me know what you think down below about this news overall. Like the video and subscribe to the channel as well. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.